What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness, Profit, Multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy, real gym owners, giving other gym owners advice, real apl <laughs> appliable information. So today we're going to be discussing, you want to open up a location, you want to open up a, a gym. Do you do an open gym model or do you open up just a personal training studio? And if you open up the personal training studio, do you do one-on-one? -on -one? Do you do large group? Do you do pay per session? What is the right model for success? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Big Jimmy. So how come you didn't open up a big regular gym? What was your reasoning behind not doing that? Well, like most of us, we all think that that's what we want to do in the beginning, right? We come from a gold gym. We come from a, a big box and we're like, wow, how cool would it be to have this big gym with all these members and this and that and the other. Then you work in one of those facilities for a while and you realize that it's maybe not the most profitable way to go. So we look at rent, we look at price per client, we look at all these other things and look at some of the gym owners that are out there that run membership-based gyms. Why are there no snap fitnesses around anymore? Why is the old washed up power lifter that lives down the street in his mom's basement and owns a 8,000 square foot facility struggling to buy a new vehicle. We have to look at these things and, and know in your town when you look at these people and you think that their gyms are cool. Yeah, if you think their gym is really cool, they're probably not making a lot of money, right? Unless it's a big franchise operation and it's, you know, it has some legs and, and that kind of thing. But we have to look at the math behind this stuff. And, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But the main reason behind not opening up a big facility with a sauna and a pool and a, you know, big member base and all this leased equipment and the machines and all this stuff is that the sheer volume of people you have to get at that price, it becomes much more difficult to become profitable. Your rent is astronomical. Just think about this for a second. Stomaching $100,000 a month in rent. And that's on the low side for those facilities. The sheer amount of square footage you have to have how you have to maintain the equipment and everything, your nut is probably closer to $200,000 a month to be profitable. So the sheer amount of staff, volume of people, how much sales you have to do on a regular basis. I mean, you're gonna have to have thousands of members and these thousands of members are gonna be paying you 20, 50 bucks a month. So people that have 20 to $50 a month, Sure, that's great, but what does the churn look like, right? What do all these things look like that are going to affect your business in a negative way? And how much more complicated does that business become? So we're trainers first. A lot of people that go into fitness as a career path and as a path that's going to be something that they're going to own typically are trainers first. So why not do the next logical leap and make more than what these big gym owners are making. And main, main reason why we never did that, we're trainers first, man. And we wanted to build a model around personal training that was better than what we were seeing at those gyms. And you know how bad the personal training is at those facilities. So it's about profit. It's about total revenue that you have to bring in. There's a lot of math to it. And uh, I don't know if Anthony wants to go over the math of this, but it's uh, it's kind of fun math when you really nail it together. And we have to look at not building a Frankenstein business too, because a lot of people want to build this Frankenstein business where it's halfway a, a big box, halfway a training gym. Maybe there's some boxing in there. Maybe there's some um, specific training for competing in bodybuilding shows and powerlifting meets and, and 
you have this, this design of the gym that makes it a Frankenstein gym. And we don't want a Frankenstein gym. We want something where people know what they're there for and why they're coming there. That differentiates us from other service providers in the area. It can't be Frankenstein. So we have to create that divide. This is a big box. This is a personal training studio. It will come to you for the expertise. They don't come to you for the pool, the sauna, the this and the that. So we can talk about the math real quick, but the last thing you can want to do is open a gym that has key card access and you're trying to sell personal training studio based stuff and you're trying to do this and you're trying to do that. We've seen it fail multiple times. There's reasons why like places like Anytime Fitness are not known for their personal training. They're known for their key card access and their ability to have ease of use. And don't get me wrong, it's a great franchise, but they struggle with the personal training side. So they need to know who they are and what they are and know what they're not. And you have to know what you are and what you're not before you go in. The easiest way to make great profits and have a simple business is the personal training studio route, namely the small group route. Yeah, and I love that Frankenstein model. I think that's a great, a lot of people do that because they're confused, they don't know any better. Big box gym sounds great. Like Jimmy said, you don't gotta, the machines are there, people come and go as they please. It is not what it's cracked up to be. So who's your competition? If you were to open up, let's say I was oh, Anthony's gym, that's what I was gonna go open up. Who am I competing with? Well, I'm competing with Planet Fitness that charges 10 bucks a month. So let that one settle in. I'll charge 10 bucks a month too. Okay, let's do some simple math. Let's say your rent is $5,000. How many members do you need paying 10 bucks a month to get that? A lot, a lot. So 10 bucks a month, Planet Fitness is your you know, competition. You got Equinox, Goals Gym, Crunch, Planet Fitness, I said Planet Fitness already, um, LA Fitness. There's a whole bunch of all these big box gyms. And what do they have behind them? Gazillions of dollars of marketing capital. You're never going to be able to compete on equipment because they have huge budgets. So your equipment's always going to be subpar. Every member that's going to walk into your facility is going to say, oh, Equinox has better machines. Because, or whatever gym it is, because they just... That you can't keep up. You can't buy machines, new machines year after year. You just can't. And if you're starting this by yourself and you don't have a lot of capital behind you, you're probably going to buy used stuff to begin with. And it's already going to look like a shit gym when someone walks in, right? So the other thing is there's only a certain amount of people in your local area. Remember, you're opening a brick and mortar facility. There's only a certain amount of people in your area. What's easier to serve? A thousand people or a hundred people? A hundred people is a lot easier to serve. It's a lot less headaches. You have a lot less complaints, a lot less nonsense. Oh, I want to cancel. Oh, this person was looking at me weird. Oh, that person did this. There's a lot less of that going on. And you're actually going to build a better community if you were to do a smaller group personal training type gym. Now, Going back to Jimmy's point about a uh, Frankenstein model where you kind of have all this things going on, you need to have two things in your facility, depending on the size of your facility. You're either going to have small group as the main thing, which is what we always recommend, small group or semi-private training. Now, remember, I hate that this has two names, but semi-private training is the way to go. It's a max of six people to one trainer. Now, small group is not large group dumbed down with less people. So Semi-private training is personal training geared for six people max. So that's the, the base of your program should be that. The bolt-on service that you're going to add to that is going to be, depending on the size of your facility, either one-on-one, -on -one, high ticket personal training, or large group, 15 plus people tacked onto their membership or just an added, you know, lower barrier to entry service. Yeah, that is the model that will get you to a seven figure gym, give you more freedom in your life, which will ultimately allow you to make more money and have the better life. You'll actually have a real business. If you open up a big box gym and then bolt on all these other things, you're going to be a mess. You're going to have to run around hiring staff. 
you need a front desk person, a this or that. There's no reason for any of that. So if you're thinking about opening up a facility, please do not open a key card gym. Please don't do that. No. And, and, and when we talk about uh, small group, semi-private, large group, all this stuff, listen to what we're saying, okay? You'll hear people in the industry that say, well, you want semi-private, which is four to one, and then you want small group, which is eight to one, and then you want large group, which is 20, right? It's like, what the hell is the difference? We have to look at it and go, why is it four to one customized programs per every individual with them on an iPad where they're using an app and, and looking at all their workouts and this and this and that? Put a whiteboard up in the gym or a screen and throw house programming up and then upsell people for customization and run it at six people. Don't, you don't need to run the four person group. A lot of gyms out there will say, or gurus, whatever, semi-private's four. It's not four. Well, the difference between four and six is just a matter of your coach running around a little bit more. It's not, it doesn't relay to the client as being more valuable or less valuable. Six is the way. Don't do this 10 person, small group, semi-private, four people, large group, 20 people. Do small group, we're gonna call it small group because semi-private sounds weird. Like what's a semi-private bathroom, right? Like it's, it's weird. Right? Well, what's a small group bathroom? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that's a, I, I that's like a good using time. Semi I like using semi-private, man. I like using semi-private. I feel like when, when people hear group, it's different than private. I mean, this is, this is why I hate this because it's like, it's, it's a stupid argument. They're actually the same exact thing. Yeah. Call it what you easy. must, but small group, semi-private, max of six to one. That is it. That's, that's it. how you that's do it. it. Yeah. And that's all, right? So it's not, there's not this middle ground that's 10 people and this middle ground that's eight. It's six to one. It's not four, six to one, right? Because if you look at it, you go four to one. Okay, cool. What's the difference between four to one and five to one? Does it change the training that much? No. What about six? No. Seven? Eh, maybe, right? That's where we kind of get a little hairy with how much value your trainer can give because they're pulled in a lot of different directions. Six to one. That's it. The six to one is it. No four, no 10, six. It's six, 15 or more on the large group or one on one. Okay, that's it. Every now and then you get somebody that comes into your gym that's like, do you guys do couples training? Sure, you fucking do couples training, right? And you price that accordingly because it's two people that are reserving a specific time slot. That's fine. But those are the buckets that you put people in. So I'll get off my soapbox, but it's such a it's such a thing that is this. People say semi-private, they say small group, they say six, they say eight, they say four, they say five, it's six. That's what, that's what we found to work best. So why not open a big giant facility? It takes too many members to, to service it all. You need to have a lot more square footage than you're gonna be able to fill. So smaller square footage, focus on personal training. You're gonna make more profit more quickly because you don't need to make as much money and pay the landlord as much to make that work. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't have much to add to that. I just think, like you said, you know, the goal of this is to make money. I did the math. I was on the phone with a gym owner the other day and I did the math with him. Right. And he was talking about how he wants to open up a big box gym and he needs a hundred clients paying him whatever it was 30 or 40 bucks a month to, to make rent. And then he told me he had 10 personal training clients who pay 300 a month. So he was saying, okay, yeah, well, if I just get, you know, my 10 personal training clients in there, it covers the rent. But dude, why are you trying to open up a big box gym then? 10 clients to cover the rent, but you want to get a hundred to pay you 30 bucks. So I, I forget what the lifetime value of a, a person, a, a regular gym member, like what that actual value is worth. And it's peanuts compared to what a value of a personal training client's worth. I mean, Jimmy, what's the value of one of your personal training clients? Lifetime 70, value. $7,500. Okay. 
Okay. So even if someone stays at your gym for 10 months as an open gym, that's 300 bucks. Guys, that's going to make a significant difference to your bottom line, your life, your profits, your freedom. And if you want to learn more about this, just click those links below. You can join us in our private Facebook group where we can continue this conversation going forward. But until next time, Anthony and Jimmy, Fitness Profit Multiplier, we are out.